In this video, I'm going to make this customer service resume example using Microsoft Word. It's a simple yet professional setup that encourages hiring managers to read through. Now, if you prefer to save some time and want to download matching resume and cover letter templates, then click on the link in the description for more information. Now, I will also provide you with tips on how to put your qualifications on the resume to make it better than 9 out of 10 other resumes based on solid research. Now, without further ado, let's start making this resume. First off, I want to start with the margins. Go to the Layout tab, Margins, and pick the Normal or Narrow Margin settings. Now, I would advise you to pick the narrow settings for some extra space to avoid cropped sentences and keep everything on a one-page document. Okay, next up, we go to the Insert tab, Shapes, and pick a rectangular shape. Cover the header area and make it a line. Now I like this simple colored black outline. After that we need to draw a text box so we can include our personal information. Remove the shape filler and outline. Let me zoom in a bit. Enter your name and surname. Go to the home tab to center it and increase the font size to let's say 24. Bold highlight it to make it stand out a bit more. After that, we need to include some contact information. Start with the physical address, email address, phone number, and LinkedIn profile. Now, don't underestimate the advantages of putting a link to a comprehensive LinkedIn profile. Research shows that it can increase your chances by 71% for landing an interview. Okay, now let's divide the resume into sections, including education, skills, experience and interests in caps lock. Now the sequence of these sections highly depends on the position you are after and your professional experience background. If you have a lot of relevant working experience, then I would advise you to start with an experience section. Remember, always put the best of above the fold. Now create two white lines in between each section and bold highlight education. We also need to adjust the line spacing options. Go to the spacing settings and change these to 12 points before and 12 points after. And then we press on OK. Now if it turns out you need more text to fit on one page, you can easily reduce this afterwards. I also want to add some borders to visually separate these sections from the body text. I click on this little arrow icon and pick top and bottom borders in the drop down menu. Furthermore, Pick in between a 13 to 16 point font size. Now, I think that 14 looks fine. Next up, we need to place the cursor in the middle of the keyword and click the Format Painter twice. Select the other sections to paste the formatting. OK, and then we disable the formatting option. So right now we need to start adding the educational background. So the university or school's name and the degree. Now make it stand out a bit more using bold and italics. After that we include the city, state and time spent in college. Now to align these to the right we need the ruler. Now, if you don't see this option you need to go to the view tab and enable ruler. Okay let me show you what this option does. So if you place the cursor right here, click somewhere in the ruler to place a left tab stop and press tab. Now, I want to align it to the very end, so I simply drag it accordingly. All right, so after that we need to add some subcategories and list information on GPA, extracurricular activities, dean's list, honors, and or relevant coursework. Okay, next up we have the skills section. Go to the insert tab, click on the table drop down menu, and pick a three by one table. Now, as you can see, the margins are not perfect, but we can change that. Go to the table layout, cell margins, and change the left and right windows to zero. Now, there you go. Now, before I add some soft and hard skills, research shows that applicants matched only 51% of the relevant keywords and skills on their resumes. In order to know what kind of keywords you should be looking at, I would advise you to copy the job description. Go to the free word cloud generator, paste it right in there, 
and click on Generate Cloud. Now, once you've filled all the cells, I remove the borders. Now, to do so, select the whole table and go to Table Design. Click the Table drop-down and select No Borders. OK, so let's say you have some experience as a customer service representative. Let me enter some working experience and fast forward a bit. Now I structured these sentences according to the PAR method, which stands for problem, action and results. Now that way you bring impact and purpose to your experiences. Same goes for using action verbs at the beginning of each sentence, like handled, signed, received. Furthermore, do you notice how I quantified my experiences? How measurable metrics illustrate someone's value and improves your chances of getting that interview. So then we have the interest section. Now, although this section is not a requirement, I would advise you to include it in your resume because it takes just a couple of words to show the human side behind the resume. Now that doesn't mean you should add some fluffy buzzwords and cliches like 51% of the resumes include, but try to grab the reader's attention. Now, if you want to come across as someone that is adventurous, enter, for example, traveling. And also inform the reader, for example, about your 2021 travel ambitions. Or perhaps you like yoga and attend weekly yoga sessions. Or what about watching Netflix? Include some of your favorite series like Ozark and Stranger Things. Now there's a big chance that the reader watched one of these as well. So you already have some mutual interests. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. Now, if you still have some space and, for example, some satisfied ex-employers, then consider adding a references section in your resume. But keep in mind to keep your resume short, concise and to the point. Recent data shows that the ideal length is 475 to 600 words. And a stunning 77% of the resumes were outside of that range. Lastly, I want to emphasize the importance of properly sending your resume. Unless instructed otherwise, save your resume as a PDF or Word document attached to the email and save it accordingly. So name, surname, resume. That way, the reader will know that it is yours without even opening the document. Now these little things prove your attention to detail and can make the difference between getting that interview or not. Okay, so before I end this video, I would like to know if you watched the whole video. And I'm even more curious if you actually got the customer service position. Leave an emoji with glasses if you watched the video till the end. And leave an emoji with sunglasses if you got the job. I want to thank you for watching and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll respond as soon as possible. If this video was helpful, then a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye!